What's going on everyone? It's Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com and it's the dog fight that everyone has been waiting for and everyone's been asking me on Twitter. Yes, I'm talking about the Samsung Galaxy S5 versus the HTC One M8. Funny enough, these two are almost identical in terms of specs inside, basically the same hardware, but a massive, massive difference when it comes to build quality, software, and execution from both of these companies. So let's get into the dog fight between the Samsung Galaxy S5 and the HTC One, right here at PhoneDog.com. This must be the biggest video in 2014, I suppose. Samsung has been absolutely killing HTC, but HTC has been fighting back. Hard. Not with commercials shaming the other competition, but by making a phone that just clearly built better than any of its competition. And I think all of you can agree that the one, regardless of stature compared to the Samsung Galaxy S5, is a much better built device in all aspects. If the S5 came in an aluminum trim, I would have a much different opinion about the S5 than I do today. So the Samsung Galaxy S5 comes at around 5.9 inches tall and 8.1 millimeters thick. It has a new material covering the back that's unlike any other Galaxy device or even the Galaxy Note series with that faux leather, but more like the Moto X with a dimpled back. Now it's still a removable back cover, but it gives the S5 a weird but somewhat nice feeling texture, plus it's a heck of a lot more grippier than the HTC One M8. But unfortunately, the sides are still covered with fake plastic chrome. I guess you can't get all of your wishes at one time. And oh, one last thing is this cover on the micro USB port. This is seriously the ugliest flap I've ever seen. The M8 on the other hand is made out of aluminum. A lot of it. The old HTC One had 70% aluminum, this one has 90. The result is an undeniably beautiful but slippery device. It also comes in three new colors, the same silver we had last year, a new champagne gold that closely resembles the iPhone's gold, and this gunmetal gray color. It measures in at 5.7 inches tall and 9.4 millimeters thick, and it weighs considerably heavier than the S5. On the front, you'll see the micro-drilled holes for the boom sound speakers. Right. Next up is pricing and configurations. So the S5 comes in at $199 for a 16GB model and $299 for the 32GB model. You can also upgrade the storage thanks to a micro SD card slot by 128GB. That's super awesome. The M8 comes at the same $199 price tag but with 32GB of built-in storage. And for the first time, it has a micro SD card slot that will accept a 128GB SD card. So if you absolutely need the most amount of storage for your Bitcoin mining, M8 it is. Next up is the displays. The S5 has a glorious 5.1 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It's been rated as being one of the best, if not the best display in the mobile industry. And I must attest to this, it's one vibrant, colorful, and just wow factor display. Now it's not the best in direct sunlight, but again, there's not really a single display that's truly good in sunlight other than Kindle's paper white displays. The M8 comes with a five inch IPS LCD panel that also has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. But unlike the S5, it carries a natural color that closely resembles the iPhone's color gamma. And it's a beautiful display full of accuracy and sharpness, but it is a bit worse in direct sunlight than the Samsung Galaxy S5. Now we can switch over to the specs and the performance. If I list the specs, they'll mean nothing to you, but some of you actually take them to heart, so here we are. The S5 comes with a 2.5 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 801 chip, 2 GB of RAM, and the Adreno 330 graphics chip. The M8 comes with a slightly slower 2.3 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 801 chip, 2 GB of RAM, and the Adreno 330 graphics chip. Benchmarks give the S5 the edge, but real-world usage renders these tests useless. The fact of the matter is, these two will give you similar performances because they are almost identical on the inside. The only differences you'll ever see will be completely relying on the software and the optimization that both companies have put in their devices. Next up are the key features that these two have that the other doesn't, starting with the S5. Obviously the S5 is built out of a different type of material than the HTC One M8, but if you were wondering about the ugly flap or even the rubber gasket, here's why we have them. The S5 
is IP67 rated, and that gives the S5 a dustproof and water resistance rating. And while Samsung doesn't claim it, this certification requires a device to be able to withstand one meter of water or about three feet of water for 30 minutes. So drop this in the sink or toilet and it should be fine. Next up is the really weird addition of a heart rate monitor. It's placed on the back next to the flash and it makes it really weird to put your finger back there and sometimes I do end up smudging the camera lens. It basically just takes your pulse and it does it pretty darn well. The only thing that makes me disappointed is because Samsung is pushing this as a heart rate monitor but there's tons of applications that already do the same thing just using the phone's flash. The HTC One M8 has only one that I would like to talk about and that's the boom sound speaker. We had it last time and we loved it. We have it again and yep, we still love it. Sweet, sweet sound of boom sound. Next, we're on to the software. Now, if you want more in-depth looks, make sure to check the annotations on the video currently now for the reviews of both of these devices, but I'll just give you a quick rundown. The HTC One runs Android 4.4.2 with Sense 6, a custom skin by HTC. I think it's more of an addition to Android rather than a skin because it's the best skin I have ever used where I actually prefer it over the stock Android experience. The experience is so close to the Zen-like experience on the Nexus 5, and it has an amazing build quality. This is quite literally the best Android skid I've ever used ever. The S5 runs the same version of Android 4.4.2 KitKat, but obviously it uses a slightly and only slightly toned down version of TouchWiz. Yes, it's more responsive than previous versions of TouchWiz, but it's still not there yet. You'll have the weird little quirks of TouchWiz, the annoying nature sounds that are disabled in the first 15 minutes of usage, and all the gestures from the old Samsung Galaxy S4. And my magazine is probably the worst part of this whole UI, but thankfully you can disable this in the settings. Next is the cameras. If you want the clear and short answer, the S5 takes the price in this department by a long way. But if you want more details, check this out. So HTC wanted to give the four ultra pixel cameras some extra life and added an additional lens to act as a depth sensor. The result is you can refocus shots after they are taken and they only work when you have a clear background and subject. And the bokeh is highly artificial unless you have that perfect shot. If you know what you're doing, it will look good. If not, you might want to reconsider using this feature. And for me, I didn't use it after week two. But my gripe is they kept it at 4 megapixels and the photo lacks so much detail and it makes me quite sad. The S5 packs 12 more megapixels and the photos are stunning compared to the HTC One or really any phone in the market. It's full of detail and life and the 4K video is very very good. Next and last up is the battery life. They both have nice sized batteries around the mid to high 2000 milliamp hour range. They both will last well over a full day of usage and they both have similar power saver modes. The S5 has a removable battery while the HTC One has obviously an internal non-removable battery. Is there really any more to that? For these phones, battery life shouldn't be an issue. So to bring the dogfight to a close, we have to recap. The M8 is powerful, well built, and runs great software. Its weakest link is the camera and that's a shame. It has a slightly more natural display and it has the most legendary mobile speakers of all time. The GS5 is also very powerful with an extra kick, has an interesting texture that feels miles better than the GS4, and runs okay software and has one smoking hot camera. If you discount the cameras, the HTC One has the edge, but if you're like me, cameras are very important. The S5 is the victor of this dogfight, but it doesn't mean the HTC One M8 isn't good. So no matter which one you buy, you'll be left with a huge smile on your face. These are the two Android flagships of 2014. And I think there's proof that HTC is on is something good because this HTC one you're looking at yeah, that's still in my pocket. I use it every day while the S5 is intermittent usage. So let me know what you guys think about the S5 and the HTC One Mate. Uh I mean M8. Right, well, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, a comment, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for future video. And now it's in stunning 4K resolution, so give a thumbs up and a comment about that as well. My name is Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.